Hey everybody, I want to talk to you about log deck height. Um, this varies depending on who you are and how tall a person you are. Um, I'm not very tall, I'm a bit sawed off, so my height might not be the same as yours, but I'm going to give you what I use and then you judge and gauge it yourself uh, to what's comfortable for you depending on, on your height. So this deck that we're looking at here because um, it's on this little bit of a grade, and I know you can't see that, this side that I'm actually working on, the operator's side, it's a little too tall for me. And what happens when you get this saw deck a little bit too high off the ground is that handle, when you're trying to lift it and lower it, for me it ends up right at the top of my reach, and it gets pretty tough on your shoulder uh, after a day of running it round and round and round, okay? So this deck, just put the tape on it here, this deck sitting at 32 inches, okay. So, and I, you know, now that I've measured it, I can already tell you, it's about four, four or five inches more than what I would like for my height, okay. I know for me, I like a log deck to sit around 26, 27, 28 inches somewhere in there, okay. And what that does is it puts it at a comfortable height that it's not going to kill my back because I'm not bending down, picking things up all the time. It's much easier to just slide the material off when you're loading it onto forks or you're putting it onto a trailer or whichever way you're moving it off of the off of the saw. Okay. Um, the other thing is that if you put a big log on there, okay, and this is something to keep in mind, whatever the height that your log deck is, think about the size of the log that you're going to be working with. So if this if this had a 36 inch log on it, it would be that high off the deck. That's pretty tough to try and manipulate uh, if you're reaching up and working with camp hooks, okay? That would be much more controllable down around here for the average guy. So something to think about when you're setting up your machines and getting them oriented and uh, building your decks. Hey everybody, I want to talk to you about one of the accessories that I think is absolutely invaluable when you're working with the HD36 in a manual situation. That's this guy right here, the log turner. Um, you know, when I was younger uh, and started milling, you know, grabbing this stuff and pulling it with the cant hooks and everything, that was no big deal. Actually, it was a bit of a challenge, so I kind of found it fun. Um, but, you know, you get to a point where that kind of wears off and you want to get it done, but you don't want to feel like somebody beat you with a, with a, with a hammer at the end of the day. So, uh, this, this right here, um, I actually don't even want to use these manual machines unless I have this tool now. All right, this is a, it's, it's pretty much a prerequisite for me uh, when I'm sawing to have this manual turner if it's not a powered machine. Uh, when I say powered, I mean hydraulics. And of course, if you can get the hydraulics, I'm going to tell you absolutely get the hydraulics. But if you cannot, and you're going to run the machine manually, I can't tell you it's necessary, but as far as I'm concerned, it is necessary. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you how it works and the operation that I'm going to show you, this works the same no matter how big the log is that this thing's working with, okay? It just makes it so much easier. Uh, I got another tidbit that I'm going to add to you, but I'll talk about it when I get to that position so you can see what I'm talking about. So what we got to do, got to get this cable out a little bit more. enough. It comes over top, comes back around, and you just put this hook on here, okay? So what I'm doing, guys, is when you get this hooked, get that plugged in there pretty tight. This will skip off sometimes, but it's not a big deal. Just grab it and re-wrap it. It's going gonna, it's gonna to pull this around. It's going to try and wrap and roll it, so you can see how it's lifting this. Oh, come on. There you go. So I'm going to try and roll this for us. Boom, just like that. So it seems like it's super, super simple, and it is super simple. But if you're trying to do that maneuver with a cant hook, or if you're going around to the other side and you're reaching underneath and you're grabbing it and you're pulling on it, it starts to wear on you. So, you know, going forwards, uh, if you don't have this tool, like I said, I recommend getting it. 100%. The other benefit 
to this. Now we're working with a square log here, so it, it's a little bit harder to describe, but I'm going to tell you. When you have the round log on here, and you make this first cut that's flat, of course that first cut has to go from that to that, and it needs to be perfectly vertical. It's critical that that cut be right, okay? Now, if you don't have this, and you put the cant hook on it, and you pull it around so that it's vertical over here, how do you hold it there? The only way to do it is either to come around to that side with the cant hook and hold it up and try in one hand with the dog, or you're going to do it from this side, you're going to hold it, you're going to climb up on the saw deck, and you're going to reach over one leg straddle in this thing, and then you're going to be trying to dog it like this, okay? So this guy right here just avoids that whole situation for you, makes it a lot more comfortable and a little bit easier. Okay, so take a look at this feature, guys. Um, whether you're just purchasing your sawmill or maybe you already have one and you're just looking to make your life a little easier, uh, it is available, just the crane arm itself. You don't have to get the loading ramps if you don't need them. I know a lot of guys are using equipment to, uh, to load, their, load their logs. So have a great day. Hey, everybody. I want to talk to you about the two-foot extension, okay? This isn't a very expensive piece. And I know you may not use it all the time, but man, is it ever ha a handy thing to have around when you're trying to just get that little bit of extra distance out of your mill, okay? Um, it'll give you 14 feet a cut if you're just working with the standard deck. But the benefit of that, even if you're not worried about that extra length in the cut, if you're working with your maximum, say you're only cutting 12s, and this machine will basically reach 12 and 12 foot 6 as its maximum length of cut. If you're not positioned perfectly on the deck, you could end up at the end of that log and not clear the cut. And that is a super, super pain. Okay, so you've got to back the saw out, you've got to cut it shorter. It's just not a simple thing to try and fix. This piece right here, if you just have it around or if it's at least just sitting underneath the mill deck, it's quite simple to put on. These end stops come off, okay? And it actually just fits right in these slots that are already there. So it's, I like to use the word plug and play on this stuff. You put the pin back in, you put the other pin in the other side, and that gives you another two feet of travel, okay? So just something to keep in mind super handy accessory I like having it around I think it's right around two hundred and fifty dollars or or was um, but well worth having so just wanted to point that out thanks